Bowflex Max Trainer Max Total Assembly Video. In this video, we will show you how to install the Max Total Fitness Machine. Before you begin assembly, please make sure you read the assembly manual thoroughly as it contains important safety warnings and assembly tips. Please note that there are some steps in the assembly process that might require two people to help with the assembly. Some components of the machine can be heavy or unwieldy. Please use a second person when doing assembly involving these parts. Begin by selecting an area where you are going to set up and operate your machine. For safe operation, the machine must be located on a hard, level surface. Please allow a minimum work area of 78.5 inches and 97 inches as shown. Be sure that the workout space you choose has adequate height clearance, taking into consideration the height of the user and maximum incline of the fitness machine. Start the assembly by checking the parts list. There are two boxes included with your assembly. Box 1 contains the following parts. Box 2 contains the following parts. Please note that a right R and left L decal has been applied to some parts to assist with assembly. Check the assembly for the following hardware. Select pieces of hardware have been provided as spares on the hardware card. Be aware that after proper assembly, there may be remaining hardware. The following tools are required for assembly. The following wrenches are included with your assembly. A number two, five millimeter, six millimeter, and eight millimeter Allen wrench, as well as a 13 millimeter double box wrench. Step one, attaching the rail assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. You might require two people to help with the assembly process in this step. It is highly recommended that someone assist you with this step. Begin step one by attaching the rail assembly, part number 18, to the back side of the frame, part number one. Slowly push the rail assembly towards the frame and match the top holes as shown. Next, using four part A screws, four part B lock washers, and four part C washers, Secure the rail assembly to the frame. Place the Part C washer first, followed by the B flat washer and Part A screws. Securely tighten each screw using your hand. Only hand tighten the hardware at this time, as you will need to fully tighten the hardware at a later step. Finally, using the provided 13 mm double box wrench, Release the frame from the shipping plate by removing the hardware located on each side of the frame. Make sure to repeat these steps for the opposite side and remove the hardware on both sides of the frame. Step one is now complete. Step two, attaching the levelers to the stabilizer assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step two by attaching four part 16 levelers on the stabilizer assembly, part number 14. Rotate the levelers clockwise to fully tighten. Tighten all four levelers. The levelers might require adjustment to level the machine. Make sure to follow the instructions in the assembly manual when leveling the machine. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. Step two is now complete. Step three, attaching the stabilizer assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step three by carefully lifting the frame assembly from the shipping plate. Place the shipping plate aside and place the frame on top of the stabilizer assembly, part number 14. Matching the frame holes to the top of holes of the stabilizer assembly, Secure the stabilizer by hand tightening four Part D screws and four Part E washers. After all hardware has been hand tightened, proceed by fully tightening the hardware using the provided 8 mm Allen wrench. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. 
Next, proceed by fully tightening all hardware from previous steps. You will require the provided 6mm Allen wrench to fully tighten the four part A screws that were previously used on step one. Step 3 is now complete. Step 4. Attaching the stabilizer shrouds to the frame assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin Step 4 by placing the left and right stabilizer shrouds at the bottom near the front of the frame assembly. Part number 12 is the left stabilizer shroud and part number 13 is the right stabilizer shroud. A right R and left L decal have been applied to these parts to assist with assembly. Snap both stabilizer shrouds into place as shown. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. Step 4 is now complete. Step 5. Attaching the rear shroud and caps. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step five by attaching the rear shroud, part number two, onto the frame assembly. To attach the rear shroud, place the inside hook of the rear shroud on the frame assembly and then pivot it up into place. Use one part F screw to secure the shroud. Place the screw on the top hole as shown and tighten the screw using a Phillips screwdriver. Next, attach two part number 17 caps on each side of the frame assembly. Gently push each cap into position. Step 5 is now complete. Step 6. Attaching the legs to the frame assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin Step 6 by attaching both Part 11 legs to each side of the frame assembly. Starting with the left side, place one Part I wave washer through the top post as shown before attaching the leg. Attach the leg to the top post and the bottom part of the leg onto the rail assembly. Proceed by securing the leg to the frame assembly by using one Part A screw, one Part B, and one Part G washer. Tighten the screw by using the provided 6mm Allen wrench. Finally, cover the hardware using one Part H cap. Push the cap into position. Let the leg rest on the top of the rail assembly. Be aware that the legs are connected, and when either of the legs move, the other does as well. Repeat these same steps for the opposite side. Step 6 is now complete. Step 7. Attaching the pedals. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step 7 by placing two foot pedals, part number 15, onto the frame assembly. Starting with the left side, insert the two bends of the pedal onto the leg assembly. Be careful to avoid fingers and hands being caught or pinched. Secure the pedal by using two Part J screws with two Part C washers on one side and two Part C washers with two Part K lock nuts on the other side. Fully tightening the lock nuts using the provided 13 mm double box wrench tool. Tighten the screw by using the provided 6 mm Allen wrench. Repeat these steps for the opposite side and make sure all hardware is securely tightened. Step 7 is now complete. Step 8. Attaching the foot platforms. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin Step 8 by locating two Part 4 foot pads. Before placing the foot pads onto the pedals, use a pair of scissors and cut the plastic zip ties from the pads.
remove the zip ties and separate the foot pad insert, part number three, from the foot pad. Starting with the left side, gently place the front foot pad onto the pedal and place the foot pad and insert onto the foot pad. Slightly push the foot pad insert into place. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. Next, secure the foot pad and inserts using four Pardell screws for each pedal. Insert the screws through the foot pad and insert and through the pedal. Fully tighten all screws using the provided 4mm Allen wrench. Repeat these same steps for the opposite side. Once both platforms are tightly secured, Step 8 is now complete. Step 9, attaching the static handlebar assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin Step 9 by locating and cutting the shipping zip tie that secures the cables inside the top frame assembly. Use scissors to cut the zip tie. Do not let the cables drop into the frame assembly and take care not to cut or crimp the console cables. Next, place and hold the static handlebar assembly, part number nine, on top of the frame assembly. Before attaching the static handlebar, connect the static handlebar assembly cables with the frame assembly cables. Make sure all cables clip and are correctly connected. Slowly insert the static handlebar assembly into the frame assembly without crimping the cables. Next, secure the static handlebar assembly using four part M screws, four part N, and four part O washers. Hand tighten the hardware for now. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. Finally, after all hardware has been hand tightened, fully tighten the hardware using the provided five millimeter Allen wrench. Repeat these steps for the opposite side. Step 9 is now complete. Step 10, attaching the console assembly. For this step, you will require the following parts. Begin step 10 by taking off the console rear cover, part number seven, from the console assembly, part number six. Using a Phillips screwdriver, loosen the hardware on the console assembly as shown. Set the screws and washers aside at this moment. Please note that the hardware contained in the console assembly is not supplied on the hardware card. Next, connect the console assembly cables with the frame assembly cables and place the console onto the static handlebar as shown. Do not cut or crimp the cables. Each cable connector, 3-pin, 4-pin, 5-pin, and 12-pin, has a corresponding end connector with that many openings. After attaching all cables, pivot the console assembly downwards to secure it to the static handlebar assembly. Secure the console assembly to the static handlebar using the previously loosened hardware found in the console assembly at the beginning of the step. Tighten the hardware using a Phillips screwdriver, but take care not to over-tighten the screws. Next, attach the static handlebar cap, part number eight, to the top of the static handlebar assembly. Gently push the end cap into place as shown. Finally, reattach the console rear cover, part number seven, to the back of the static handlebar. Step 10 is now complete. Step 11, attaching the upper handlebars. For this step, you will require the following parts. It is highly recommended that someone assist you with this step. Begin step 11 by placing the left dynamic handlebar, part number 10, and the right dynamic handlebar, part number 19, on each side of the frame assembly. A right R and left L decal have been applied to these parts to assist with assembly. Be aware that the pedals and the upper handlebars are connected, and when either of these parts move, the other does as well. Starting with the left side, Secure the dynamic handlebar using three part P screws and three part N lock washers. 
fully tighten all screws using the provided 5mm Allen wrench. Next, repeat these steps on the opposite side and attach the right dynamic handlebar, part number 19, onto the frame assembly. Verify that all hardware has been tightly secured. Finally, be sure the upper handlebars were attached so that they are in the range of operation for the user. Step 11 is now complete. Step 12, connecting the AC power adapter. Begin step 12 by placing the AC adapter, part number 21, to the front near the bottom of the frame assembly. Next, plug the power adapter as shown. Push the AC adapter into location and make sure that the power adapter wire stays clear of all moving parts. Congratulations, you have now completed the assembly of the Max Total Fitness machine. Before using the machine, please make a final inspection. You can now remove any protective covers from the face of the console as well as the plastic scratch guard strips from the rails. Please inspect the machine to ensure that all fasteners are tight and components are properly assembled. Do not use until the machine has been fully assembled and inspected for correct performance in accordance with the owner's manual. Max Total Adjustment and Features After assembling your new Max Total, we will now show you how to move and level your machine, as well as some of the key features. Moving the machine is simple. The fully assembled machine can be moved by one or more persons. To move your machine, grasp the main bar of the console assembly and carefully tilt the machine toward you onto the transport rollers located on the bottom front. Be sure not to grab the console display while moving your machine. Be aware of the handlebars plus the weight of the machine. Once the machine is tilted, push the machine into position and carefully lower the machine. Please note that moving the machine and all abrupt motions can affect the computer operation. Once the machine has been moved to your new location, you might want to level the machine if the floor on your workout area is uneven. To adjust and level your machine, loosen the locking nuts and adjust the levelers until all four are evenly balanced in contact with the floor. Do not adjust the levelers to such a height that they detach or unscrew from the machine. Finally, when the machine is leveled, tighten the locking nuts and ensure you have a stable machine before you use it. Your new Max Total Fitness machine comes equipped with many features. The console features is a central component of the machine. The console display shows the workout measurements and current options. Please reference the assembly manual for workouts, troubleshooting, and other program features. Enjoy your new Max Total Fitness Machine, brought to you by Bowflex.